Google Cloud offers a first-class experience for Windows workloads that can help you reduce your license costs. Today, we are going to migrate and modernize a legacy web application built on the .NET framework to Google Cloud Platform without changing the source code. Doing so can make your apps more scalable and more reliable while helping to reduce operations costs. We're starting with this familiar e-commerce shop. It was built using the .NET Framework version 2.0 and still works. We'll take the existing application code and move it to Manage SQL Server and Windows containers on Google Kubernetes Engine. The original Pet Shop architecture is a typical application deployed on a single VM. It has two tiers, a presentation layer, which is .NET hosted on IIS on Windows, and a data layer with four SQL Server databases deployed on the same VM. We want to modernize the presentation layer to leverage the scalability and resiliency of Kubernetes. By using containers, we can reduce the footprint of the application and make it agile for both day-to-day -day work and future development. But first, we want to migrate the data layer to a managed SQL Server using Cloud SQL for SQL Server. In the Google Cloud Console, we'll create our managed SQL Server instance. There are several details you will need to provide, such as the name of the instance and the region you prefer. Be sure to create your database instance in the same region where you will run your Kubernetes cluster. Once the instance is created, we need to migrate the databases. With import, we can restore an existing database backup file. In this case, we'll restore a back file we already uploaded to a cloud storage bucket. We'll select our file, give it a name, and import. Once we do this for each of the four original databases, we can see the SQL Server instance and the databases right here from the Cloud Console. With Cloud SQL for SQL Server, we can use some of our favorite tools, such as Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. We'll need to use SQL Proxy to help ensure the connection between our local machine and Cloud SQL is secure. Once SQL Proxy is installed, we'll launch it and point to the instance we just created. As you can see, the proxy is saying it is ready for connections. We'll use SSMS. We'll provide authentication details. Note that the server name is localhost. This is because we use SQL Proxy, which abstracts the actual address of where the server is located. After this connection is established, we can see the databases and interact with them. We have now migrated our data layer to GCP. That means we can turn our attention to the presentation layer and the .NET web application. Now we don't need to change anything in the existing web app code. All we need to do is create a Docker file. With Docker, containerization of our app is just three steps. First, base off of the ASP.NET 3.5 base image. Second, step into the working directory of IIS. And third, copy the content of this application into the container. To build the container image using the Docker file we just made, we'll run the command docker build on a Windows machine that has Docker CLI installed. Then, to push this new container image into the Google Container Registry, we'll use docker push. The Google Container Registry is what will allow us to reference this image in a Kubernetes cluster. Before we deploy the web app, we need to resolve one issue, how to allow the web app to communicate with the databases. Our new architecture is built around containers. We can install the Cloud SQL Proxy as a sidecar alongside our web app. This means that the web app and Cloud SQL Proxy will be on the same network, and this will allow the web app to communicate with the database using localhost as a server. So we'll need to update the web.config of our web app so it uses localhost in the SQL Server connection strings, and then rebuild our container image and push it to the container registry. We'll also build a container image for the SQL Proxy. First, we'll need a SQL Proxy Docker file. This time, we'll base off of Microsoft Base Container Image for Windows Server 2019 Core, then add SQL Proxy to that, and then invoke the proxy and point it to the SQL Server instance. In Docker, we'll build the container image and then push this image into the registry. We now have two images. Pet Shop IIS is the image of the web application that was containerized, and SQL Proxy Sidecar is the SQL proxy that allows the app to connect to the managed SQL Server. We'll deploy the application and the SQL proxy on the same pod in a Kubernetes cluster. But first, we need to provide a YAML file that describes the state we want for the containers. Fortunately, we can use a fairly standard boilerplate YAML. The important part is the node selector, where we can indicate that we want to deploy into a Windows node pool. This means that we want to deploy our containers as Windows containers running on a Windows node. 
Then we list the containers we want to deploy, the Pet Shop IIS and SQL Proxy sidecar images we just made. Finally, we'll expose this application using an external IP. We'll use kubectl to deploy our containers and check the status of our web app. Apply starts the deployment. Get services lists the external IP address of the web app. Get deployments lists our deployment, now living in the cloud. And get pods lists the pods, showing that the application is up and running. At this point, we've modernized our web app into a Kubernetes managed app running in pods with one container for the .NET app and a second container for the SQL proxy with secure connections to the managed SQL Server database. The advantage of an architecture like this is that we can scale to two pods with a single cube CDL command. Check the documentation to get started and try it out for yourself.